To be a successful adventure racer takes a special breed of person. Someone not afraid to take on the impossible. Inner strength, courage, a thirst for adventure, a high pain threshold and a degree of madness. Located in the far northeast corner of China, on the border of Mongolia, Russia and Kazakhstan, over 100 adventure racers from over 20 countries will now take on the most extreme expedition race ever staged in Asia. Racing 330 kilometres across one of the most remote, culturally diverse regions on the planet, 28 teams will battle the elements and each other in a dramatic race for survival. This is not a made-for-television series. This is real people taking on extreme challenges with real danger. Using only a map and a compass to navigate, the teams will hike, paddle, ride and abseil their way from the areas of Canas to Altay. It's as much a mental challenge as it is physical, with teams pressed to breaking point as they battle fatigue and exhaustion, pushing them to the limit and beyond. Welcome to the X-Trail Altay Expedition, the ultimate test of human endeavor. Welcome to survival of the fittest China. Starting in Canas, the 28 teams representing 22 countries will complete seven stages. Starting with a 55 km trek, it's then a 29 km kayak, followed by a 45 km overnight trek, a 98 km bike, a technical ropes course, another 58 km bike and finally a 4 km trek to the finish. All up, it's a 330 km challenge, with the top teams expected to be home in just under 40 hours. Along the way, the teams must reach 30 checkpoints, and there is one mandatory two-hour rest period. Such is the extreme nature of adventure racing. This race is considered a sprint, with many of the teams expected to travel at high speed and with no sleep. And just to add to the challenge, the teams are only given a map to study just hours before the race. China's just an amazing country. It's huge. It's the, the first time the World Series has been to Asia in, in its entirety. We happen to be in the Xinjiang province uh, between the Kazakhstan border, Mongolian border, and Russian border up in northwest China. This is a really diverse region bringing in ethnicities from all the border regions. When they announced it, um, our team was just like, yeah, we gotta, we gotta make this one. We're attracted to adventure in far-flung parts of the world, and this is definitely a far-flung part of the world where we are right now. It gives you the feeling of uh, like being an early day explorer, maybe, especially in this area. Adventure racing continues to grow in popularity as more people search for the ultimate in extreme adventure and it's an opportunity to test themselves in one of life's most challenging arenas. Adventure racing is one of those things that really just captivates people. It captivates their imagination, but it's more about this amazing journey that they undertake. It's a test of both mind and body, and just to compete in adventure racing at this, you know, in expedition-style racing. Well, it's the hardest thing out there, uh, mentally, physically, and all the skills involved to push through uh, mountain biking, trekking, mountaineering, ropes courses, climbing, rappelling, all the water sports. It's basically a lifetime of experiences foiled into you know, one week long. This is the hardest endurance sport in the world. If it was just one of those things, then it wouldn't be so tough. It's the fact that it's all of it. It's, it's the mental toughness you have to have, the years of physical endurance that you have to have behind you. 
and then to put all of this together in an environment that you're not familiar with, that is some of the harshest places on the planet, and go, you know, stick you in a team environment, and nobody crosses this line as a solo. That's what makes this sport one of the hardest sports in the world. As they say, you can have a team of champions or you can have a champion team. Four individuals, they just, they just don't succeed. If your team falls apart, or if you have even one person that's just on the same program, it doesn't work. Despite the spectacular scenery, the teams are highly competitive by nature, and they're here to win. We've got some of the best teams from around the world, and you can imagine there's going to be some really competitive racing. This race will probably see um, our highest level of competition apart from the World Championships. Our team is ranked third in the world. Uh, we win a lot of races, and we don't like to lose, and we're not here to lose. I'm very excited to be here. We have been involved in adventure racing for over three years. This is a very unique opportunity for us to compete against the world-class teams and compete in such a beautiful place. At the end of the day, you walk off the race course and you know that you gave it your all. However it shakes out, as long as you can, uh, everybody walks off the course, hopefully healthy and friends, at the end of the day, that's what matters. The race starts in Lake Canass, with the 28 teams anxiously prepping for the long road ahead. Stage one is a 55 kilometre trek around the picturesque lake, with navigation expected to be easier early in the race. The lead teams were expected to go out hard and fast. Four, three, two, one. gun went off and it was go and they just bolted and it was game on. It was interesting to see kind of people's breathing who was working extremely hard and shouldn't have been at that point in a 36 hour race. After we actually figured out how long this course was going to be, we knew that this race was going to be super fast. The first 55k, it was probably the fastest 55k of any race that I've ever done. Early in the race, and Tule deliberately tries to push the pace in an effort to break free from the pack, but many of the teams managed to hold on. So we were trying to use the speed uh, at the first uh, hours of the race to push the other teams really hard. So uh, we took the early lead up the hill and really push it. Tule's tactic starts to pay dividends, with all the teams starting to feel the pinch. I think it's pretty safe to say that the teams went too hard too early. Knowing that there's a short race, we all kind of jumped in there and, uh, and went at it. We uh, ran with five teams and ran together. This is a uh, real fast running. When we see another team, you oh, run, 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 run. Lake Canass, located in Altay Prefecture, provides a spectacular backdrop to the race. This remote region is populated by Tuvans and Kazakhs, who live a traditional agricultural and nomadic lifestyle. Such is the isolation of the region, many of the locals have never seen Westerners before.
the whole reason we came to this part of China, or to this race, is because of the, what we've seen of the scenery. But we weren't disappointed, it's just fantastic. In a controversial decision, Team Red Bull enters the race without a specialty navigator, focusing purely on speed. They figured the shorter course would be relatively simple, and the plan was to follow some of the more experienced teams and then to pounce later on in the race. While some would argue it was a foolish decision, it was a very deliberate strategy, with Red Bull prepared to take the gamble in an all-or-nothing approach. We have planned a bit more strategy to, to be with the uh, other team and uh, just follow and you go as fast as you can. We were two, three teams following the best navigator and uh, just because you have a map, you, you think you are navigating, but no, you, <laughs> you, when you follow, you have to tell, yeah, he's a good navigator, I follow him. All the top teams, we we're putting the hammer down knowing that you go at this pace and there are going to be casualties. And there were casualties. Adventure Medical Kit, one of the favoured teams, decides to break from the pack and go their own way. The move backfires as they lose considerable time trying to find checkpoint four and fall well back early in the race. It can be challenging when you're out there and you're not quite sure where you are. Some people might call it lost, you know, momentarily misplaced. It can be extremely difficult on the team because you're kind of scratching your head, what do we do next? What's our next move? Which direction do we go? But we're working with one to 100,000 scale maps. So, I mean, these are maps that, you know, you might see in an atlas of a country sort of thing. These aren't detailed maps that you would use, you know, to find your local park. So in that, there's quite a bit of challenge because you really need to, to look at the map and, and extrapolate what you might see in the real world. And not all tracks are still the same as they were in the map 20, 30, 50 years ago. Even the highly experienced Italian team, Free Mind, were having trouble staying on course. We arrived at the first checkpoint and we discovered that we are 25th uh, team. Good morning. So I was a little bit frustrated about that, but at the end, uh, through each checkpoint, uh, we, we came up in the, in the position, so we feel, we feel well. Everybody, it seems, had underestimated the course. Even the Australian team, Mont Adventure Racing. Limber legs. This could be no further children for me. We lost a little bit of time on a checkpoint, maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, but I think we're in good spirits and trucking on. We made back to the Connors Lake. Team Silva is looking beautiful. Travelling at breakneck speed, five teams arrive at Lake Canass, finishing the 55 kilometre trek in a time of six and a half hours. The lead group include Red Bull, Estonia Ace Adventure, Hagloss Silva, Tule and New Zealand Adventure. It was now time for the 29 kilometre kayak along Lake Canass. trekking stage we had a kayaking stage and we were a group of five teams who came in there together in the lead so we paddled together for a bit but then uh, we got separated. The Red Bull team was never lacking in confidence. They felt any navigational shortcomings would be more than made up for with all-round speed. Navigation was not an issue on the lake. We knew we have to cross the lake and come back. I think we have the best team on the on the paddle. It was really nice, uh, the first part, because it was sunny. When we turned, we had the headwind, and we start to get water on the kayak, on ourselves. It was cold, freezing, and the sun just disappeared. 
So the end of the kayak was cold, cold, cold. After a poor start, Adventure Medical Kit, one of the pre-race favourites, arrived at the lake almost an hour behind the top teams and back in 13th position. Whew, pushed hard there. We had a, about an hour navigational mistake. So we're pushing hard to catch back up. So we had made our mistake in that first leg, so we got to the kayak put in in about 13th place, far cry away from, from the top three we were aiming for. I guess really the plan doesn't change. Keep pushing hard. Desperate to make up for lost ground, they went out hard on the paddle. We felt great in the kayak. We had a new team member this race, uh, Bob, and he's an excellent paddler, and he really helped our speed on the water. We stayed motivated, we stayed focused, and we passed two teams on the water. There are gonna be low moments, and you need to understand that and expect that, and then also be prepared to handle those, um, to know they're gonna come. It's naive to think they're not, and to know that you push through those valleys and, and soon enough you'll come out and have a good moment. Dave Slosh and his Sun City team arrived in transition exhausted and well off the pace, but still loving every moment of it. What an incredible course. That has been amazing. And I'm glad we got here for a bit of sunlight too. We were sort of budgeting on around 12 hours and that took us eight, so well ahead of our schedule. So yeah, we'll see what the rest of the night brings really. Obviously the other boys are going for the money, so they're pushing right hard from the, it's interesting to see what happens tonight, you know. Some of them might uh, have a bit of a hard time, I think. As expected, the early pace starts to take effect. One of our teammates, he struggled halfway up to the first checkpoint. He just couldn't paddle anymore. He was feeling very faint. And so he actually just sort of sat down or laid his head down in the boat. We actually connected two boats up as Thierry just, he was so unwell at that stage and about halfway back he come good so he disconnected and and went again. After a hectic trek the teams took the chance to regroup and rest weary legs and take in the spectacular scenery. The lake was gorgeous, just the views, giant mountains, a bunch of the valleys up high filled in with snow, the clouds. Before this race, I think I know a lot about China. In fact, it looks like a little bit like Canada or Switzerland or something. We were uh, running on the ridge up here and could see the, the lake the whole way. It was so beautiful. So stuff like that gives you energy to, to keep on pushing. I think for, for our level, we're pretty happy about how we are right now. And we made some small mistakes, but you also have to learn how to use the map here in China. There is nothing that compares to adventure racing that brings in so many different dynamics that you have to be completely on point because you get one wrong and the game is over. Just give me the rope. Quick, quick! If we're gonna do it, we do it quickly. Yeah. Take your paddle, take what your paddle. Doing? What am I doing? Why Put am I... it on the back. You stuff up a shift in adventure racing and you've traveled to China for no reason other than to see the beauty and, the, you know, then it's, it becomes a holiday and that's not what we're here for. Halfway through the kayak leg and it's Red Bull moving into the lead ahead of Thule with Hagloss Silva in third. As the sun drops, the temperature falls to zero and fatigue begins to set in. Meanwhile, the race starts to take its toll with the inexperienced Chinese teams. <laughs> In all the excitement and chaos of stage one, Team Kalias miss checkpoints five and six. And then to make matters worse, they take a wrong turn on the kayak, taking them to an artificial lead. Their joy, however, is short-lived when they discover the error of their ways and they are faced with a heavy time penalty. 
The second Chinese team is also having troubles, with Team Kusa finishing the 55km track almost 90 minutes behind the leaders with their weakest leg, the kayak still to come. <laughs> they're not really pro at the paddle, so they want to shorten the time than what they estimated and she wants to have some better performance. Late in the 29km paddle, Red Bull, Tule and Hagloss Silva open a small gap on the field as they look to press their advantage into the 45km night trek. Despite the bitter cold, it was perfect paddling conditions. At the completion of the kayak, it's Red Bull in first and looking strong. Tule is close behind, with Hagloss Silva a further three minutes back. We're just glad that we just uh, got out just on uh, dark, eh? which is pretty key, because we're starting to get a little bit cold. Oh, the toughest part was when we turned around and went back towards here because there were quite big waves and I had a lot of water in the, in the kayak where, where I was sitting. So I was sitting with water like to my ankles and that was cold. I'm glad to be off the lake. Uh, my fingers and toes are a little bit cold but I think we're going to warm up fairly soon once we start running. Yeah. I do so. think that tonight will be pretty hard. Ah, yeah, yeah, it's, these races are as, you make them as hard as you push yourself and um, we're going to be pushing ourselves pretty hard because these guys are right here with us, so I don't know, I don't, I'm not too sure what the night, the night has in store for us, but um, we're going to press on and uh, yeah, time will tell. The water is freezing, but I'm happy to, to go out on the mountains now. So, pretty excited and getting warm, finally. <laughs> We're fourth place right now. We had a pretty rough paddle. Uh, Camilla, she was throwing up, um, was feeling really bad. <coughs> we were towing each other and helping each other, so that was good. And now we just, yeah, get some warm clothes on here, some new shoes, and we can take off. Now 11 hours into the race, the three leading teams set off together into the mountains in total darkness for a difficult 45 kilometer overnight trek. It's a critical stage of the race where navigation will be key and with the three teams looking to keep one another in check. First thing we did was go straight up a hill. We caught up to Red Bull and Tule. We spent the rest of the night trekking with them. We would have probably rather trekked by ourselves, but I mean, it's, it was a bit of talking and stuff going on while we were jogging along. Ah, up hill, very good. Again, Red Bull plays a smart tactical game deciding to follow the stronger navigators during the night. We were two, three teams together. In fact, the first trek and the second trek were more or less the same, but this, in the second trek we have no scenery. If ever there was a good example of just how important good navigating is to a successful team, you only have to look at Adventure Medical Kit. In a dramatic change of fortune during the night, Adventure Medical Kit make up nine places, putting them right back into contention. It was night time. We could see lights up high on different ridges, teams all over. It kind of was hard to make sense of things. But Clearly teams were lost, they were not picking the best lines through. So what we did is we took a lot of direct lines and we could see ourselves passing teams. But then with the difficult maps, we came across a pretty major creek. And we assumed it was the creek we were looking for on the map. It turns out it's an unmapped, massive river. It tricked a number of teams. And when we came into the next control about halfway through this trek, we were in fourth position. So we went from 10 to fourth in a matter of two, three hours, based solely on navigation. While medical's fortunes are on the rise, 
so is Red Bulls. They continue to bide their time, feeding off the stronger navigating teams during the night and just waiting for a chance to make their move. I think everybody is looking at everybody, like, uh, oh, this guy is not feeling very well, or, yeah, for sure you, you think, oh, maybe in the next appeal we will push a bit harder to, to go, to, to just be alone. After a dramatic night of racing, with many of the teams disorientated, cold, hungry and exhausted, the three leading teams, Tule, Hagloss and Red Bull, make their way into Hemu village, a remote town populated by the Tua Mongols. Here the teams are required to cook traditional noodles and to take a mandatory two-hour break. After 20 hours of non-stop racing, the food and rest are a welcome relief. So oftentimes these races will involve some type of cultural experience. We actually got to make noodles in the yurt of a, a family that lived right there. We boiled them, we got to have a meal right there. They also had a mandatory two hour rest break. Keeps us safer out there if we get that time. But it's always good to kick your feet up, relax, rest your mind, get a little bit of time off the clock. We slept in the yurt and me, I was going straight in a bed. There is the family of the Kazakhs and uh, I just take a big jacket from the man and I put over myself and I was sleeping with the family in, the, in this huge bed. So this is, uh, is unique, you can only do that when you are racing. That was uh, re really good. Something to eat and then a small rest and prepare for the second part of the race. Now with a 40 minute gap over the field, the three leading teams head out of Hemu village with a small trek before the next stage which is a 98-kilometre mountain bike ride. Drama unfolds for team leaders Tule when Samuel Clark, in a sleep-deprived rush, leaves his jacket behind. I'm missing my Gore-Tex jacket. I can't go on without it. I thought I had it on. Sorry. It's a compulsory item, and he's forced to race back to find it. Yeah, we got to get it. Sorry. Even a wardrobe malfunction can be the difference between winning and losing. Gotta have the compulsory gear. <laughs> As the three lead teams head off into the early morning light, a stream of battle-worn teams make their way into the village. It was a long way here. It's a hundred kilometers on our foot, so I'm totally trashed. Do you, do you sometimes question why you do this? <laughs> yeah, for 10 hours, the last 10 hours I was questioning. I the challenge to find out our limits. I did find mine. I was very on the edge. I'm looking forward. These are one of my favorite noodles. When I'm in China, I, I search for places. Muslims usually make them. But I have never eaten so big. I think I made them not so good. If you are more professional, then they are more slim. <laughs> Is it ready? Where's the lady? Good? Okay. This is amazing. Yeah, it was a tough night. High altitude, not easy. After a remarkable recovery, and now in fourth position, Adventure Medical Kit are now in pursuit of the lead group. Okay. You sort of have highs and lows, you know, you have little moments when you're like, oh God, we can't find this <laughs> then, then you have another moment where it's just like, oh, that'll be where it is. <laughs> you have a little thing and then off you go again. And everyone has it at a different stage too, you know, like some someone will be just feeling down for a while, so you take a bit of weight or you, you know, and then or they take your bag and then and then when you're feeling better again, you do the same for them. Uh, I didn't really sleep, but it's nice to, nice to rest. Yeah, it definitely makes a difference to rest a bit. Looking forward to getting on that bike. Yeah, changing discipline is always nice. The village of Hemu is like a town that time forgot, a cultural melting pot in the middle of nowhere. As the sun rises, the village becomes a hive of activity.
Hello. 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 It's really nice to see the local towns here and the yurts. So that's really special for us. While many of the teams enjoy a short break in Hamu village, for Team Teknu, the race is all but over, with one of their team members struggling. You do everything that, that you can as a team to try to keep moving forward, because in a short race like this, if you take two hours in, in an expedition race, you can get away with taking some time and, and sitting down and you know rehydrating and nursing your teammate back. But in a short race like this, you don't have that time. That luxury is not there and one of our teammates uh, got sick and just stomach issues and couldn't keep the pace. It's a massive blow for Teknu, one of the race favourites, and despite soldiering on, they're eventually forced to withdraw from the race. Like all adventure racers, team leader Greg McCall tried to remain philosophical. It's difficult when you have to pull out of a race, there's no doubt about that, none of us want that. It happens to people and the team dynamic is hugely important to um, being successful on the race course. There's no doubt. If, uh, if your team falls apart, or if you have even one person that's just dot on the same program, it doesn't work. Early in the 98 kilometer mountain bike leg, and Red Bull, Tule and Hagloss continue to battle it out, sharing the lead as they keep the tempo high, knowing that Adventure Medical Kit are closing back in full. Racing, being real close. This is my first exhibition race but I didn't really expect it to be so close with the top three teams. Buoyed by their rapid progress through the field, Team Adventure Medical are now within striking distance of the three leaders and it's now a matter of playing it smart and pacing themselves. Some of us were feeling good and ready to take off and go catch teams. Some of us were feeling like we needed to kind of settle in for a little bit, spin out the legs and that's where the teamwork comes into play. As the three leaders battle it out on the bike course, a stream of place getters make their way into the bike transition area. Nothing's easy about adventure racing, and before the teams can ride their bikes, they first have to assemble them. Fatigued and sleep deprived, even simple things like changing a tire can suddenly become very difficult. Now 26 hours into the race, and despite extreme fatigue, the lead group get a chance to take in some spectacular scenery. One of the big motivating factors was the, the views all around. We were riding through these valleys along the stock roads. It was really nice mountain biking. We got to see a camel, which is pretty cool, in the middle of China, who would have thought. And cows and goats and sheep and all that. Wow, the scenery. This is the kind of photo you keep for a long time. That's why I have stopped to do expedition race. Yeah, you feel free. Despite the magnificent scenery and culture, there was nothing easy about the bike ride. It wasn't just the 100 kilometre distance. The rugged terrain had many technical challenges with plenty of steep inclines. Guys, I'm going to have to walk. The bike ride was challenging. It was 100 kilometres. We had two massive climbs, 3,000 plus feet, over 1,000 metre climbs. 
on rugged trails. We're pushing our bikes for over an hour at one stage up a hill. When you're descending on the mountain bike, you want to push it because you want to make up time, but you might make up a minute or two, whereas if you crash, you could lose a race. Red Bull continues to play a waiting game. While they wanted to make a break, they didn't have the confidence in their navigation, preferring to follow the others at least until the time was right. Some good climbs out here. Just taking it as it comes, I suppose. I don't know how far we got left on this ride. Maybe 30 odd K, 40 K. I don't know. It's close racing. A few teams up here that we're just, uh, you know, going back and forth with. So, see how it goes, I suppose. Showing up to a race that has navigation um, without a navigator, it's certainly a gamble. Having the intent to follow the top navigating teams and then out sprint them to the end, is it a way to win a race? Sure it is. Is it everybody's style to want to win a race that way? Not necessarily. We were here to be on the podium at minimum. Maybe navigation was not really our point. We had very good horsepower. Incredibly, less than 10 minutes from the end of the bike leg, Tulay suffers a tyre puncture and they're forced to stop, allowing Red Bull and Hagloss Silva to pass them by. And it's a critical moment in the race. One K before the ropes, we got the puncture. So Silva was maybe a kilometre behind and they passed us. Then uh, they come in at third place. Until now, Red Bull has been patiently waiting for a chance to accelerate. And with 70 kilometres to go, and with a technical ropes course just ahead, Red Bull decide now is the time to make their move. So at the end of the, the bike, we have tried to push a little bit more. The main strategy, it was to arrive first or second uh, at this point, because we knew there is only two ropes. And if we arrive three team, it means there is a team who have to wait and lost 5, 10, 15 minutes. Remove your feet and let's go. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, all right, sorry. Hey, let's go. Red Bull wastes no time racing down the ropes course as they look to break free from the two chasing teams. Despite navigational flaws, with only a 58 kilometre bike to go and with the sun still shining, they believe they can navigate their way home without assistance. However, it's a huge gamble. Okay. Yep. Meanwhile, Tule manages to catch Hagloss Silva at the top of the cliff face. And it isn't long before the two teams realize that Red Bull is racing off and going it alone. But would the tactic work? Not everyone was convinced. So far, what we've seen, they don't do much navigation, so they might end up waiting for us. While Hagloss and Tule are focusing on Red Bull and questioning their navigational credentials, meanwhile, the comeback kids at Venture Medical are quickly making up ground and now threatening in fourth position. So we got off the bike, uh, we're still in the fourth position, and we had learned, because the ropes was an out and back section, we had learned that we put a little bit of time on our chasers. So now we're sitting comfortably in fourth place with maybe a 40 minute lead uh, on fifth place. Realising that Team Red Bull has bolted, Hagloss and Tule waste no time descending the cliff face, with the race now becoming a sprint to the finish. We were in second place. The leading team was about 10 minutes in front of us. And then there was another team close behind, only five minutes behind. So the pressure was on. Now 33 hours into the race, and it's Red Bull well out in front. And with victory in sight, they believe the race is theirs for the taking. Wow, we are first, it's so cool. And the first part of the bike was not really difficult on the navigation. So I think we were a bit too relaxed and we were riding like crazy. With Red Bull now surging out in front, Hagloss Silva and Tule go all out in pursuit. Just when it seemed Red Bull had the race won, their world comes crashing down, with their weak navigation finally coming back to haunt them. 
and they are hopelessly lost. We passed the checkpoint, we passed everything and, uh, and after it was a big mess because we were maybe, I think, 10 kilometers too far. After all they've been through, it's a devastating moment and now completely disorientated and losing time, the race is thrown wide open. We know that Team Rebel will have, have problem with navigation. And already with the first or second checkpoint, we heard that Red Bull was lost. <laughs> Without an experienced navigator and with no one to follow, Red Bull are riding blind and are helpless. Their race is over. I think if they had pulled it off, it would have been brilliant. It, it would have been brilliant, but they didn't pull it off. Take nothing away from them. Those guys are fantastic athletes. You know, if they had had a navigator, it would have been, it would have been they'd have won the race. With Red Bull gone, it's now Hagloss, Tule, and Adventure Medical left to battle it out for the title. When we got to the first checkpoint, we'd taken the lead, which was pretty exciting. But we, we kept calm and, and uh, we got through the next checkpoints cleanly. But then coming to the very last checkpoint, we, we made a big navigational error. Incredibly, after almost 35 hours of racing and on the home stretch, the top three positions continue to change. While Hagloss's mistake was only minor, it's enough for Tule to pounce and take the lead. The Silva was maybe 10, 11 minutes before us at the second last checkpoint. We took the right canyon and I took the wrong one and we lost the race and ended up in third. But that's just what happens in these races. With other teams faltering, Adventure Medical Kit are now within striking distance of the lead. Considering at one stage they were back in 13th, it's been an incredible comeback. Oh, it's always energizing when you pass the team, especially when you don't see the pass. <laughs> <laughs> we're feeling good, yeah, we're ready to get it done. What, what, what about the weather change? Looks like it's coming through. Ah, we'll be sleeping in the bed by the time that comes through. We're good. With great teamwork and brilliant strategy, Adventure Medical now move into second position, with only Tule in front. We learned we were in second position. We made another pass. Uh, and we are super motivated. We can even see a team's lights up ahead. So we knew, you know, first place was, was that close. Hey, what a night! 36 hours into the race, and it's Tule finally stumbling into the last transition area, tired and confused, with just four kilometers to run to the finish. Okay. We'll leave our bikes here. Where's our bag? Are we first? I don't know. Well, We're yeah, our running shoes. What, what the f is going on? It's been a titanic battle all the way to the finish, with the last few hours proving a navigational nightmare. And with the weather closing in, the finish couldn't come any sooner. Despite all the chaos, Tule manages to keep it all together, holding off a fast finishing adventure medical team to take a well deserved victory. Incredibly, Samuel Clark, exhausted and caught up in the moment, isn't even sure if they've won. Did we win? Yeah! yeah. 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 So good. This last navigational section was so super tricky. I mean, between the time the maps were printed 45 years ago, a lot of water's been under the bridge and it looks nothing like um, it showed on the map. And we were thought we, we were just bleeding time for sure. We saw teams out there, torches all around, thought, it was um, surely somebody's passed us. But um, yeah, turns out we uh, came away with it. It's a brilliant fight back by Adventure Medical, pushing Tule all the way to the finish and taking second just 15 minutes behind. We had a little slight nav error with CP4. We just couldn't, we took some time to figure it out, and Rob got us sorted yeah. out. But unfortunately, we went from being in the top group to 15th well, place. But we, we never gave up and fought all the way to the end, and look at us, second. And in the end, Hagloss Silva manages to hold on to third position, just four minutes behind Adventure Medical Kit. While the leading teams took a well earned break, the rest of the field continued to battle it out. It would prove to be a long and difficult night, with the temperature dropping to just two degrees. How are you feeling? Oh, awesome, awesome. Oh, everything hurts. 
so badly. Timo is really on fire. He's like, uh, I'm just enjoying. Uh, he's taking all the turns, right? And uh, and just, we're, we're, we're been doing really good. Navigation continues to be a problem. And despite getting lost, New Zealand Adventure Team arrive at Checkpoint 28 in good spirits and pleasantly surprised to be in fifth position. We um, picked up an old trail, which we thought was the main trail. End up the next village over and it's all sort of lined up. Spend time going back and forward and round and round, just trying to uh, kind of work out where you are, but when you're not sure where you are, and no one in town speaks uh, English, so we just couldn't even really ask. And, hey, there's only four teams been through. What? Really, only Wait, four no, through? Only four teams have been through. Oh. Yeah. How are you feeling? You look cold. Oh, I'm wrecked, but that's cheered me up a little bit. Yeah. The second night takes its toll with many teams struggling to find the checkpoints. For the Chinese team Callius, the finish must have seemed a world away. They spent the night hopelessly lost, wasting almost 12 hours going around in circles, trying to find a checkpoint. Adventure racing can sometimes be a cruel, unforgiving sport. Now 52 hours into the race and the second Chinese team Kusa enters checkpoint 26, ready to do the ropes course and with a long way still to go. She said she's pretty satisfied with her teammate so far. Even one of his male members get injured, they still insist. She said she will be really glad if the team can tie together and finish the race. Just ahead of the Chinese team are Free Mind and Mont Venture Racing, battling it out for 16th and 17th position. Adventure racing is not just about winning titles. Sometimes it's just the experience. And despite many setbacks, the two teams soldiered on, savouring every moment of this incredible adventure. Tough night? <laughs> yes, wet, cold. Uh, what we look for. <laughs> We're looking to finish as well as we can and uh, so yeah we'll just um, finish off the race and as quickly as possible um, and yeah the results will look after themselves. During the course of day three, teams continue to stream across the line. Just finishing the race can be a victory in itself. With all the leading teams now home safe and resting, all attention turned to the two Chinese teams to see who would be the first to finish. This was the first expedition race ever staged in Asia. And for the local Chinese teams still new to the sport, finishing this race would be an historic moment. Despite so many hurdles and challenges along the way, 62 hours into the race and Team Kusa is now within sight of the finish. And there is huge anticipation with the local media out in force to welcome them home. To everyone's delight, Team Kalias finished soon after Kusa. And for the Chinese, it was as good as a win as they celebrated long and hard well into the night. Despite all the pain and suffering, for most of the teams competing here in China, it was a special race and an experience they will cherish for the rest of their lives. The whole reason we came to this part of China or to this race is because of the, what we've seen of the scenery. We weren't disappointed. This area of China is an amazing place. The culture um, is quite different. This area, everything is, is perfect. Most of people in China, they are smiling. They are really friendly. So I love this country. Huge, huge mountains that are super open. So you have these breathtaking views. Of course, the lake paddle, that was just gorgeous. Happy people, 
people don't have much, they don't need much. And they probably don't leave their five, 10 kilometer square area, but they're living life and they're enjoying it. And they're all extremely friendly to all these crazy people running through their land with bright lights in the middle of the night, begging for water, begging for food, asking directions in a language they don't understand. I say, if you want not, you must see that in, in your life. <laughs> We're in China in, a, in some of the most beautiful country on the planet. A lot of people in North America, you don't know that much about China. And you go to a place like this on the Mongolian the Russian border and look where you are. Look what you're doing. Your average person doesn't get to experience these kind of things. The sport favors experience. The more of these races you've done, the more mistakes you've made, and then hopefully you've learned from them. You see people at their raw state, you haven't slept, you're hungry, you're freezing cold out there, and that can bring out the best and it can bring out the worst in people. When you're out in a race like this, you have a bit of time to reflect on life in general. Sometimes you think, what am I doing out here? And then other times you, you look around and you think, man, this countryside is fantastic, and this is why I do this. I hope there could be more races of this kind to be held in China in future, and more Chinese teams will be encouraged to join. To be a champion adventure racer, to be at the top of the sport, you have to have an amazing amount of mental toughness to be able to endure physical challenges that most human beings can't even fathom. And you have to be able to do this with a smile on your face while you're helping your teammates and while they're helping you.